to a prophet to transcribe or preach to Saul. And so he told Saul, God wants you to annihilate everything. Nothing should survive. But now, when we get down to verse 6, Saul takes it upon himself to choose who he's going to take out and, and who he's going to let live. And it says, And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. All right, so Saul has been influenced because of the worldly things that was to the advantage of the favor of the Israelites. Oh, y'all, y'all got to hear what I'm saying right here. Because, see, a lot of times some things will have you in a place of disobedience just because you've been swayed or wooed because of something that was good done for you. Watch this. That's hidden agendas within things in order to keep favor on what, what uh, 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 people are looking for out of you. And what happens is it causes you only to be in a place of disobedience before the eyes of God. Verse 7 and Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest to Shur, that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. Well, once again, here we go, being disobedient. In the previous verses, once again, God said, annihilate everything. Now, he not only uh, 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 lets the Amaleks go, we look down here in verse 8, he lets the king survive. And then it says, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag. And watch this. Here's still disobedience. All right, verse 3, God said, not only annihilate the people, but the sheep, everything that is uh, 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 something of a resource out of the Amalekites, eliminate that as well. Verse 9, Hava says, But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refused that they destroyed utterly. So he picked and chose what he wanted to destroy and what he didn't want to destroy. And see, that's still in a place of disobedience because God has already given clear instructions what to keep and what not to keep in your life. Understand this. See, obedience is not even just about active hearing. Obedience also ties itself with what's connected to you in your life. Amen. Last, last point I'm going to hit tonight. So what's the impact of one living a spiritual life of disobedience? We, we know what the, the definition is. I've run down the characteristic to you. Now you need to know what's the impact. Well, basically those that allow man to deceive them into living a disobedient life, watch this, receive the wrath of God. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 5. I hope somebody is learning something tonight. This ain't about Apostle Elliot. This is about the word of God and giving you a revelation as to what thus saith the Lord. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 6 it says, Let no man deceive you with vain words. Meaning puffed up stuff or because they did something good for you or they can provide something for you in return. Amen. They, they can do, as we say in the natural, a drug deal for you. They can hook you up. All right. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. All right. And when we talk about wrath, it comes from the Greek word orge, which means anger and violent punishment. Amen. So you think your struggles is a hard life. How about when God vexes you himself and begins to punish you just because of his anger? You think you're dealing with something with the devil and with demons. You ain't meant nothing when God puts his own anger upon you and begin to, to vex you, begin to cause you to be in a place of being miserable because you're experiencing his punishment. All right. Uh, turn with me quickly to Colossians. I'm going to bag that up again. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Amen. In Colossians 3, 16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, 
teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. See, in that, we have to understand that it takes the word of Christ within us and us being able to hear in order for us to be into a place of be a peace. Because if we are in a place of disobedience, it requires us to richly look towards the wisdom of God that comes through Christ and it comes to, to us through him by us operating in the sense of obedience. Amen. Amen. Praise God.